What's going on, Canes fans? Welcome to episode number nine of Walking and Venting with Coop, the series where I literally walk along the edge of my property while we vent about a hot, controversial topic when it comes to the Miami Hurricanes. And you guys know that you are more than welcome to be very blunt down in the comment section and give your opinion on this topic. And th that's what the series is literally built for. It is why we do it. Man, you already saw the title. You already know what we're discussing this afternoon. <sighs> Should the Miami Hurricanes can Josh Gaddis and also possibly should Miami fire Josh Gaddis and promote Frank Ponce to OC? And, you know, some people want to see this happen right now. Like, I've seen a lot of people say, you know what? Go ahead and show Josh Gaddis the door and let's just go ahead and promote Frank Ponce and get this thing over with. Let's get the ball rolling right now because the season is already a wash. Let's go ahead and get things rolling, right? And I, I want to talk about that a little bit this afternoon because... My response to that is, be careful what you wish for. Now, listen, I am not going to come on here and defend Josh Gaddis because, bro, it's literally almost impossible to do. When you watch this Miami Hurricanes football team on offense, we are just boring. And as I said in my video yesterday, it wouldn't matter that we're boring if we were winning football games. Nobody would care, you know? It wouldn't matter. The problem is we're not. So we're boring and we're also not winning. So that's not good. So, you know, you're not going to get any brownie points with Miami fans like that. The reason I say be careful what you wish for is because I'm seeing so many fans. That number one, so many fans are calling for Ken Dorsey. Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Ken Dorsey is not leaving Buffalo to come to Miami. That money hits a little bit different. Yeah, I know we're, we're paying, you know, like $1.8 to Josh Gaddis. Listen, man, he, Ken Dorsey has a real good thing going in the NFL. He's not coming back to Miami. So just go ahead and get that out of your head. Number two, again, a lot of the fans are saying, let's just go ahead and promote Frank Ponce because he has experience as an offensive coordinator, right? Yeah, I mean, he does, but I mean, he was only a true OC for one season, I believe, which would have been 2021 at App State before he came to Miami, which he's now the passing game coordinator and quarterbacks coach. So we all know that Gaddis, for some reason, is the OC and receivers coach instead of OC and quarterbacks coach, which is typically the norm. But anyways... Frank Ponce has a background, you know, with offenses. He's been the co-OC at a couple of different places. Uh, but as far as being a true OC at the college level, it was one season with App State. Now let's take a look at Frank Ponce's numbers while he was at App State because I want to bring up a very important point. While he was at App State as the OC, I made, no I made notes for this one too. App State went 10 and 4 with losses to Miami, Louisiana twice, and Western Kentucky. Now keep in mind at the end of the day that we're talking about a Sun Belt team. So, you know, not necessarily the most crazy schedule, but they went 10 and 4. Now that's not what you're you're waiting for, right? You want to hear the stats offensively. They averaged 34 and a half points per game, which was number 22 in the country at the time. 192 rushing yards per game, which was number 35 in the country at the time, and 249 passing yards per game, which was number 54 in the country at the time. Now, when you want to compare Miami, at this point in time, what we're averaging, points per game, we're at 29. App State would have been at 34. Rushing, we're at 130. App State was at 192. Passing, we're at 315. That is where Miami beats out App State in 2021. They were at 241. Now, here's my argument. I said all of that to say this, which is going to confuse a lot of you. We're comparing apples to oranges here. Like, we can sit here and look at the numbers all day, and you do have to 
take a look at those things, right? Like you're going to evaluate a guy before you promote him or before you hire him. So you need something to, to gauge. You got to go off of something, right? The problem is completely different player personnel, completely different conference, different coaches also surrounding him and working with him, different location. There's too many other variables. Like you, you can't just go off of those numbers. And I'm seeing so many fans that see the bigger numbers and they're like, okay, that's the guy. Coop, that's the guy. We just got to go ahead and promote Frank Ponce. Man, you know, Frank Ponce right now is the quarterback's coach. I realize that we're struggling under Gaddis with this scheme, but we have seen the quarterbacks kind of regress a little bit, right? Ponce is also the passing game coordinator. Now, is he a little handcuffed right now? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know what Mario is letting him do. I don't know what Gaddis is letting him do in this power spread offense, right? But I'm just saying again, be careful what you wish for. Now let's get on to Josh Gaddis a little bit because so many people are going to stop watching the video earlier on and they're going to think that for some reason that I'm defending Josh Gaddis, which I absolutely am not doing. Trust me. Man, we are just struggling all around, again, when it comes to the offense. Uh, this is a scenario where it's tough for me because I don't like the scheme. I don't like... What is it everybody keeps saying? The, the the route combinations and whatnot. I don't feel like that the players actually have fun in this offense. And that does matter. It does. I don't think that they enjoy running. I don't think they have fun with it. I just look, look at them. Watch them. I don't think they like it. I don't think that they enjoy it at all. Now, there are some issues here, though, however. We don't have the explosiveness with our running backs. We have an O-line that is just decimated with injuries, not playing very well. They're small up front. We don't have those big-time trenches, guys. Go look at some of these other teams and look at the average size on their O-line. We do not compete. We're much smaller. We're not as strong. We're not pushing guys around. We're getting bullied in the trenches. And these things absolutely do affect us. And you also have to remember that when you look at our team, our number one wide receiver right now on the team is a transfer. Our number one running back on the team, Henry Parrish, is a transfer. So I do agree that some people are saying, you know, it's going to take some time for Mario and the staff to bring their guys in to run this offense. Now, there is the argument, again, we know this, there's the argument that you still have to build things and scheme around the guys that you have. Nobody cares if you have injuries. You still have to find a way to win. And you've got to win right now, you know? Because, again, people are going to say, well, wait till two years from now when we get the recruits in, three years from now. But we still do have to find a way to win games right now. So I don't necessarily accept that as a, a full-blown excuse. Because you can sit here and say that we want Gaddis to scheme around the O-line issues, which would mean what? Uh, quicker passes, more screens. The problem is we also can't block. Our receivers are struggling to block. Just, it, it, at the end of the day, man, we're just struggling all around. We have way too many issues. Now, like I said, I'm not making excuses for Gaddis because he's not helping things. Uh, but again, who would we realistically get? Ken Dorsey's not coming. Um, there are a lot of OCs that would definitely be interested. I mean, at almost $2 million per year. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people say TCU's offensive coordinator, Garrett Riley. I mean, he's only been there one year. It would probably be an upgrade in pay. He's a Texas guy. He's not a Florida dude, but sometimes I think that's what we need. Sometimes I think we focus in on bringing in Florida guys, guys with, you know, roots in Miami. And sometimes I think we need to look outside the box. You know, because it hasn't really gotten us very far up to this point, at least in the last two decades anyways. But there would definitely be OCs that would be interested. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Then we're bringing in yet another new scheme. An entirely new offense. We are basically starting over from scratch again. And what we're doing is we're hoping that we strike gold right out of the gate. We get that instant winning scratch-off lottery ticket right instantly just instantly man that's what we're hoping and praying for and that might not because then what are we going to do here's here's my thing 
we bring in another new OC and we say, well, we got to give it one to two years because we got to get guys that are built specifically for this offense that we're trying to run. And also we got to give it time, everybody to gel and to mesh and the chemistry and to install it. Are we going to do that again? Now, like I said, I'm not making excuses for Gaddis because, bro, I, I can't. I can't. We're on the struggle bus right now, bro. But I think that, in my opinion, okay, here, here's the thing. Let's do a, let's let's uh, let's do some predictions. Do I think that Josh Gaddis gets fired at the end of the season after this poor performance we've seen from him? Honestly, no. I do not think so. Now, here's the thing. Does Gaddis leave and accept a job somewhere else? That's very possible. And I say that because even though he's not doing well as an offensive coordinator, uh, he could potentially accept a, a head coaching job, maybe even at a lesser program. Or he might not like all the heat because, of course, there's a lot of it with Miami fans in the media around here, right? We want immediate results. And, you know, maybe he can't take the heat, so he wants out of the kitchen and he accepts a job somewhere else. I do not think that Mario fires him, and here's why. Even though the offense is obviously struggling, some of it's going to go back to what I previously said. Mario is going to say, hey, we're going to get some bigger guys in here on the O-line. We're going to get some more explosive players uh, that will give us more time to you know, make adjustments and uh, change the scheme up a little bit. And he wants some stability and consistency. Because if you look at our past, we had Dan Enos for, what, one year? And then we upgrade to Lashley, which overall felt like an upgrade. There were still, of course, some issues. But then Lashley's here for two years, and then we can the whole staff and bring in a whole different set of coaches. And before that, we, we go on this rotation of like one to two years, especially with coordinators. We can them, we bring in someone new, we start over again. And the thing is, is I'm literally just going to repeat what I just said in case you missed it. I think that Mario wants some consistency and stability because it is tough when you continue to start over and over and over again. And I am not coming on here. See, people are going to get a mixed message with this, and I don't know how to properly relay what I'm trying to say. I'm, I'm struggling here, guys. I'm not saying that I want to retain Gaddis but I am saying that I'm a little scared of starting over again. I know it wouldn't be full-blown. We're not talking about Canna Mario and, and Steele and these other position coaches, but that is a big-time shift and change to bring in yet another offensive coordinator. So we're saying, hey, TBD's struggling, man, because you know he, he, he ran this offense under Lashley. It's quite a bit different under Gaddis. He has to relearn an entirely new system. And then we're going to ask him, because TVD is probably coming back next year, unless he transfers. We'll see. To learn an entirely different offense again for a third time? That's asking a lot, man. Unless, unless we basically, again, just completely... We most of the team transfers on offense. We bring in the new guys and we get a full blown reset. Like we flip this roster, man, and then we kind of start fresh and install a new offense with a new OC. Again, I'm not saying that that Gaddis is the answer by leaving him here and continuing to struggle. Uh, I guess the point I'm trying to make is I don't know what to do, and I know, I know that's not the kind of video that you're wanting. I, I know that there might be mixed reactions for this one. But I'm just saying that I am scared to start over again because we might not strike gold the next time. We might not see instant success. But I will say that if Gaddis continues to do what he's doing right now, we are going to continue to struggle because the players do not seem to enjoy this offense. Now, does Gaddis' offense look entirely different? I mean, this kind of Midwest, you know, power spread thing if we had bigger offensive linemen if uh if we had everybody buying in if we had a different set of receivers uh that could potentially block better if we had a more explosive running back it might i don't know again we we are kind we are in full rebuild mode and we are kind of changing the way this team looks and operates everybody wants to say well we got that south florida speed man we need to spread it out Obviously, that's not necessarily what we're trying to do right now, and I don't know if it's what Mario wants to do. 
Uh, and a lot of people have said Mario is kind of a little stubborn when it comes to that, uh, which makes me again believe that he might be okay with retaining Gaddis. At the end of the day, I will say one of the biggest issues is the fact that we can't run the ball. I mean, against Power 5 opponents, what are our, what are our stats against Power 5 opponents this season? Because I'm over here throwing around numbers for the entire season. What about the last four weeks, which would be all Power 5 opponents that we've played, all ACC teams? We're averaging 86 rushing yards per game. Now look at it. We rushed for over 100 against Virginia. We won. We rushed for over 100 against Virginia Tech. We won. We were in the 40s against North Carolina. We were in the 40s against Duke. We lost those games. A lot of this seems to come back to the fact that we cannot establish a run game. And nobody respects it because they know that we can't. Now, again, who do you want to point the fingers at? Do you want to say it's Gaddis because there's not as many runs to the outside? Do you want to point it at the O-line because it's injured and it's it's smaller? Uh, do you want to point it at the running back saying that they don't have good enough vision, they've not been consistent enough, Parrish is the only guy that seems to be able to run the ball? We've got Knight and fumbling. We've got Thad who's been injured again, I guess, but hasn't really seen the field much. Like, we got a couple of walk-ons. Like, what? who are you pointing the finger at? What is to blame? But at the end of the day, we cannot successfully run the ball, and it's hurting us very much. It's a big-time problem. So where am I even going with this video, guys? Uh, this has been the weirdest walking and venting I think I've ever done. I, I just I, I'm seeing so many Canes fans that are saying, let's fire him, let's bring in a new OC, let's do it right now. And I just, I don't, I don't know how I feel, man. Like I said, I don't, I, right now, right now, I do not like Josh, Josh Gaddis. I don't necessarily like the offense. We're struggling in many areas for multiple reasons. But I, I'm just, I'm, I'm scared to bring in another OC and start over again. I think that's the point that I'm trying to make. Uh, you guys let me know. I don't know. I, I, I know that probably 9 out of 10 of you are going to say fire Josh Gaddis right now. Who cares? Uh, it's going to be a crazy 2023, man, because I think we might lose one, maybe even possibly two quarterbacks. Uh, there's going to be a complete flip of this roster. Again, I've said it multiple times. These guys are family, They but they got to do what's best for them. We got to do what's best for the team. 15 plus players, maybe even more. It's going to be completely different, but it will be a good thing. Honestly, like I said, for everyone all around. But I still, I'm telling you, I just don't think that, that Gaddis gets fired, but he might accept a job somewhere else because he's just unhappy here or he can't take the heat here. I guess that's the point that I'm trying to make. Would I give him a second and third year to see what he can do after we bring in some recruits and give it some time? Maybe we're not as injured. Oh, man. You, you guys are asking the hard questions, bro. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm so sorry to ride the fence on this one. I, I should have thought more about it before I filmed, but I just, I I don't know, man. Right now, on paper and looking at the tape, Gaddis is not the answer. He's not. But who else is going to be? And who would realistically take the job? And who could come in here and actually install an offense that is successful year one without as many speed bumps as we're having to go through right now? I don't know, man. I don't know. For the first time in a long time, Coop, the guy who runs his mouth 24-7 for a living, is uh, at a loss for words. What an episode 9 of Walking and Venting, right? Uh, you guys discuss it down in the comment section below. Tell me what you think. Maybe you're not at a loss for words. Maybe you have a solution. Maybe you have all the answers. I'm looking forward to chopping it up down in the comment section below, man. Do not forget... We're doing a meetup at Canesware this week, the Friday night before Miami versus FSU. I will be at Canesware in Davie giving away some free Cane for Life and Coach Coop wristbands. Would love to meet up with you guys. Hurricane T2Y is going to be there. 
Uh, former Miami Hurricane Lance Leggett's going to be there. Alex from Locked On Canes is going to be there. Steve-O from 365 uh, Miami Hurricanes is going to be there and more. It's going to be a really good time, and I would love to see you guys there. Um, just what a weird one, bro. What a weird one, man. I don't know what else to say. Remember, though, guys, we're all one big happy college football family, but at the end of the day, I got to say, it's always better when you get to rep the U. Coach Coop, peace out. I'll see you all in the next one.